I told you it's not ready yet. I mean, just show it. Well, it's been almost two years now since developers Play Magic took a stab at trying to remake one of the most stylish first-person shooters ever. Yeah, 13, a game about a special forces soldier with amnesia trying to uncover the events of the past as he investigates a deep, dark conspiracy involving a secret society of 20 hidden members. It's kind of like the Born Identity meets Hot Fuzz. The original has a pretty solid cult following, and for good reason, it's a fun, enjoyable shooter, despite being so short in length, so a remake was something that was met with a lot of scrutiny. And if you didn't see my original video on how that whole remake turned out, well, then here's a bit of a refresher. Mr. President, can you hear me? Okay, he's breathing. But hey, the past is the past, and here we are now in 2022, brighter, happier, and more optimistic, as a new developer, Tower 5, have picked up the reins and done their best to salvage what they could. And if you take one look at the polarizing difference between the overall and recent reviews on Steam, well, definitely paints a much more positive picture. Well, I guess the biggest compliment I can give here is that it's now a lot less awful, but is it still worth playing? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let's just find out, shall we? Ready, son? Right, so first things first, hands down the biggest change with this new update is the way the game looks. A huge criticism the remake originally got was how it removed the cell shaded art style of the original game and just replaced it with these generic looking visuals. The whole thing runs on the Unity engine and really managed to capture that bland, run-of-the-mill art style that looks like it's had absolutely zero love put into it. What they've done to fix this isn't to redo the entire thing from scratch, instead it just kind of looks like they've applied like a Snapchat filter or something, making the edges of things look a bit more defined now and giving them that thick black outline that resembles inclines. There's other incidental effects too, like scuff marks on the side of weapons, and a lot of those comic book panel death animations are now much more improved. Also, those little comic book panels that would pop up to show off something of interest now actually work properly. In the first version of the remake, when these things came up on the screen, it would just completely tank performance. But now it seems it works as it's supposed to, and it draws your eye to an air of importance instead of drawing your attention to just how crappy the game started to run. Well, his widow's in for a surprise. Plus, all of the lighting looks completely different now, making everything look a lot flatter. And in any other game, I'd say that this would be a bad thing. Only, it kind of works the way it's intended to here, keeping everything looking much more in line with its 2D influences. The lifeguard in the opening level still looks like a Fortnite character model though, and the spad soldiers kind of look like Joe Biden, but I mean it's night and day compared to how it used to look. On the rooftops early on with Jones, when you're sniping at those dudes off in the distance, they actually topple forward and fall to their deaths now. Good job. Good job. I mean, it's still not as awesome as the original, but it's a marked improvement. Good job. You do get a sense of there being effort put into some of these sequences to really improve how they look. And someone definitely spent a fair chunk of their life here making sure all of this stuff doesn't look quite so pathetic. It still, of course, can't hold a candle to the original, and there's just like an understated simplicity to the environments in that game that just make the whole thing so timeless. It's like the level designers knew what needed to be included when it came to making the world look believable without bogging it down with all these needless details. If you ever wonder why so many indie developers try to make their games look old-fashioned on purpose, well, the original 13, I think, is a perfect example of the kind of effortless aesthetic that they're going for. <laughs> Having said that though, there are still a few things that they've overlooked here, like the screen shaking whenever an explosion goes off, which was just such a basic effect. 
Plus, during that mission rescuing Harrington, they still haven't put in a basic snowstorm. And I just don't get it. Like, why is this so hard to put in? At this point, a 20-year-old engine somehow managed it, and yet a 2022 game can't. But I mean, short of redoing the entire engine and the modeling from scratch, I think this new visual style does a much better job of keeping the whole thing in line with the original. Just a bit of a shame that they also didn't go to the trouble of updating all of those pre-rendered cinematics, which not only shows off the art style the engine used to use, but also just shows off just how lame and uninspired they are. Do you know what I mean when they've been thrown together by someone who's only doing it for a paycheck? Alert! In the original games, these cinematics were often mysterious. Not to mention fast paced and exciting. Get behind the wheel, drive. Okay. Just don't hurt me, please. Alert! They had animate across the screen dynamically, drawing your attention to different areas like you were flipping the pages of a comic book. Here though, they're still the same old boring animations with soulless looking characters who all have these dead empty eyes. And you'll still see all these weird graphical glitches that they just never bothered to fix. As for the shooting and the combat, well, one of the biggest improvements is that they've now removed the weapon limit. Yeah, for some reason, in that original remake, you could only hold, I think it was like, three guns at a time. So thankfully, that's now been completely done away with. It's just not a game designed around a weapon limit, and whoever thought of implementing it in the first place deserves a colonoscopy with a cactus. However, it's kind of like a one step forward, one step back here though, because while they did remove the weapon limit, they still left in aiming down the sights, and not only is this a crappy mechanic in the sense that it's completely out of place, but it's also crappy because it's actually kind of necessary, because if you shoot from the hip, well, you ain't gonna hit jack shit. And yes, I get that adding ADS to the game makes it feel more modern and up to date, but ironically, it actually makes the game more difficult. Because you gotta compensate for that extra half second or so it takes to aim down the sights before shooting at enemies. Not to mention, you lose a hell of a lot of your peripheral vision when the iron sights take up like 80% of the screen. I know it doesn't sound like a huge issue, but it kind of ruins the run and gun nature that that original game had. I mean, look man, the shooting in that game was never all that good to begin with, so to somehow still have it worse than that, you know, it's really saying something. If they keep making changes, learn to see me as a brother instead of two distant strangers, well, I really hope that they get rid of this ADS mechanic and return to the hip firing system. What's more annoying than that too is how they completely reset your weapons every time you enter a new area. And look, my memory might be a bit foggy from one too many glasses of Japanese whiskey, but I sure as shit don't remember the original game doing this either. Yes! Speaking of things changing between levels, there's times when the cinematics don't play here to set up what's happening in the ensuing chapter. It'll just hard cut, and then suddenly you're in an entirely different location with absolutely no context. Fuck this shit! <laughs> On a positive note, I guess one thing that did surprise me was how enemies are actually challenging now. Putting up an actual fight during combat and even rushing and flanking your position. During stealthier sections, they'll actively seek you out and investigate if you're making too much noise or killing their buddies. And the inclusion of that basic stealth mechanic of having a marker fill up as you're getting spotted also helps immensely during those sections where you have to remain undetected. As a result, I found that hard mode actually lived up to its namesake and offered up a good balance between being difficult but also fair. So I guess if you're keen to replay this thing and actually have some semblance of a fight here, well, then go for this setting. I mean, you're not exactly fighting Skynet levels of AI here, and they're not gonna make you fear for the future of humanity, but it is a huge difference over the original, where the AI was just utterly brain dead. I mean, I think Bob the Zombie from Day of the Dead would have been able to outsmart those guys if push came to shove. That noise? Some of the stealth sections are still about as fun as using sandpaper to wax your asshole though. And can we just take a moment to acknowledge here how I'm simply praising AI in a video game for working the way that it's fucking supposed to. I don't know man, I guess that's like the state of the industry now. But either way, the shooting feels a lot better and enemies just don't turn into statues when they're killed now before slowly toppling over. Yeah, for those people who didn't experience it, before this patch, there was this really weird thing where enemies would kind of lock into place for a second or so after being killed, before then falling over like they'd suddenly turn to stone. I'm glad to say that this doesn't happen anymore, and the ragdoll physics have just the right amount of jank here without feeling flat out broken. 
In fact, I don't think I saw really any serious ragdoll glitches the entire time, and god damn son, that's really saying something. You know what I mean, compared to like the first version of the game, where I ran out of fingers and toes to count these on within half an hour. Did you see that, Derek? Shut up, bitch! But remember how I said before how this whole experience is like one step forward and then one step back? Well, what I'm going to talk about next is a perfect example of why that is. And that's when you look at the sound design, which is something that is just still really lacking. Jones, do you read me? Now, I suppose I should clarify that when I say this, I don't mean that I had any huge sound glitches or anything like that. It's really just a criticism on a more basic level in regards to the mixing just being all over the place. <laughs> dialogue again is often really loud with the music barely being audible and that is a huge issue because the music is one of the coolest aspects of that original game. It's a great example of a dynamic soundtrack, music that changes depending on the player's actions like you got your very own jazz band hiding inside your headphones. And yet half the time here, you can barely hear it. Look man, I just can't stress enough here how fucking awesome that original soundtrack was. And about the only way you could get any cooler while listening to it is by smoking cigarettes and wearing reflective aviator sunglasses. And I mean, it's such a simple thing to fix here, do you know what I mean? Just turn the music up. The often complete lack of background ambience is also, again, a huge issue, removing a lot of the atmosphere from certain sequences. I pointed this out in my original video, how there's no background ambience at Plain Rock Asylum, for instance, and it's still an issue even now after this update. Well, has she spoken? Patience, he only just came to. Well, has she spoken? Patience, he only just came to. When you're fighting Doc Johansson soon after, you can barely hear the background music, which is a shame because that original track really captured that feeling of taking on this batshit insane quack. Come on, time for your dissection cars. Over here. In fact, at one point in the same level, there was no background music or background noise at all. It was just like this dead void of sound. And again, like compared to how it played in the original. Oh. While I'm on the subject of playing rock though, this is the chapter where I had the only real game breaking bug I ever encountered in my entire playthrough. During this level, there's a bit where two guards ambush you in the showers because they want to either beat the shit out of you or use the back of your throat to get the pocket lint out of their pee holes. Either way, it's not good. Examine his chest as well. So what you're supposed to do is beat both of them up and then escape, only I had like a weird bug here where I couldn't kill one of them. All of my hits just went straight through him, so I had to restart the entire level from scratch. Twice. Oh. And it also started to stick out to me at this point when I realized that they didn't even bother putting in death animations. I can't really remember if the remake did this either, but I really started to notice it this time, where as soon as your health hits zero, the retry screen just instantly pops up. Fuck! A couple of times I didn't even realize I had low health and just restarted the checkpoint before I even realized. I mean, at least the low times are quick, I suppose. <laughs> The other big glaring sound emission that still sticks out to me the most is during all these various flashbacks. Hey, did you hear me, son? Did you Every time you had these flashbacks in the original game, there was like this eerie sort of whooshing sound in the background the entire time, where you really felt like you were hopping into the disjointed memories of our amnesia-suffering protagonist. Made these events seem kind of captivating, but now it all just feels so piss weak. It's like someone's just added a basic black and white filter to the whole thing and called it a day. I've got a class A hero mission to offer you. I've got a class A hero mission to offer you. Boring! Now look, I don't know much about game design, even though I have played a lot of them. But I think in terms of all the things you can mess around to fix here, you know, fixing sound issues is surely going to be one of the easier ones. Wrong! And when you've got a game like 13, which relied so heavily on its music and sound to really set the tone, to have it anything less than top notch here is a major stuff up. Oh. 
just kind of made me realize how much we take good sound design for granted. What the hell's going on here? Maybe it'll get fixed in another patch down the line, and I mean, that's really what the gaming industry's come to now, isn't it? Where even the most basic features of a game don't even work anymore. You know, I think this whole exercise is a perfect example of two things here that are really becoming a serious issue with the gaming industry on the whole. The first one being this trend of needless remakes in lure developers actually creating new IPs and coming up with fresh ideas. And I mean, look, don't get me wrong, sometimes these remakes work really well. But a lot of the time, and sadly for the majority of it, I think they don't. How sweet, and yet completely inappropriate. And we're living in an age too where people simply think that a game looking better is all it takes to somehow improve upon it. <laughs> Other than that, and I think also more importantly, 13 really highlights how this is also an age where developers release outright unfinished games, and then expect people to pay money for it with the vague promise of fixing these games up down the track. And I think the complacency and acceptance to this kind of issue is also really just feeding the problem. And despite how busted or broken a game might be on launch, you can bet your bottom dollar man that there's going to be some dickhead somewhere trying to defend it as the norm. I like this Saint Row and finally show the playable character Nipples which GTA is afraid to show her boobs. For GTA fans who break balls and Saint Row come back to play GTA 5 instead of writing here the next GTA will come out on PS5 hopefully 2025. You know what it's like? It'd be like buying a car that barely runs. The bonnet's all dinged up and the engine makes a crunching noise, but the guy who sold it to you promises they'll fix it after your first 6 month service. And I get that there's a price discrepancy between buying a car and playing games, but I mean you wouldn't put up with it then, would you? So why put up with it when it comes to gaming? Yeah, I don't think we've all forgotten Saints Row, try as we might. Fuck! Holy shit! And Cyberpunk 2077 recently just had a DLC drop, which is something I haven't played, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. Let me hear about this problem of yours. But that's kind of proving my point. I mean, that game came out back in, what, 2020? And it's only now in 2022 where we're finally starting to see it find its stride. You can kind of look at this 13 remake in the same way. It originally came out in 2020, and it's only now in 2022 where it's been brought up to a playable state. And not even by the original developers. Tower 5 came in guns blazing and tried to turn the whole thing around here. Like a rich Saudi Arabian billionaire coming in and saving Euro Disneyland from bankruptcy. Finally. I feel like I've spent three months inside a tin can. Shut up, bitch! 13 is definitely a long way from where it used to be, and you know what, I'd even say it's worth playing if you can get it on sale. But the fact that we had to wait almost two years until after it was released for it to even get to this state isn't cool. If you were waiting all this time for this patch, well, then look, I guess you won't be disappointed. I mean, it is far better than it used to be, and you can at least play it from start to finish without feeling like you flushed your money down the toilet. The inclusion of the multiplayer mode is a nice touch too, but I don't think this scene's exactly going to be buzzing anytime soon, so don't expect any longevity from that mode either. HOLY SHIT! And at the end of the day, I'd still say that people should seek out the original game and play it the way it's intended. I mean, the old game still runs really good on the PC with just a few patches. Oh shit, dog! I don't know, pick it up for the PlayStation 2 or the GameCube, and get it running on an old CRT for maximum gamer points. About the best thing I can still say about this remake, you know, harkens back to my opening paragraph, and that's that it's now slightly less awful. Whether or not you think that means it's worth playing though, well, shit, that's up to you. But at least this time you won't have to be carrying eldritch horrors over your shoulder, or having your ears raped by obnoxious sound glitches. 